happy vlog! I'm so excited to be with all of you. We're recording a weekend vlog and we're gonna have some fun. If this is the first time watching, I think the reason is because we're going to do a fall decor walkthrough of the house with some ideas and all of those things. So if it's the first time watching, I'll leave it time stamped for when that's going to start in the video, but you should just hang out anyway because we talk about planning, cooking, life, organization, decor. We talk about everything, so there'll be something here that you love. I'm Christopher, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, also, if you're new, you should know that if there is something that you like in the video, it probably will be linked in the description box. I try to do the best that I can. If I forget something that you are interested in, leave a comment and I'll add it. Um, but it's Sunday. It is going on 10 a.m. I just finished my grocery shopping for the week and we ended up having to buy a lot because I didn't grocery shop last weekend because I knew I had a really busy week at work. Steven was also out of town this weekend. So I just did it meal plan like I normally would and just kind of winged it all week. But I actually meal plan. I'm gonna show you how I do that. And yeah, let's get started. Let's start with a little grocery haul. I don't do grocery hauls often. If you end up liking it, let me know and we'll do them more often. But let me grab my iPad so we could talk about meal planning. This is my planner. I went back to a digital system just because I really do prefer it. It's so much easier. So I meal planned this week. And what I do in my meal plan is I actually take a picture of the recipe right on my phone and I embed it in. So Monday we are having tomato steak caprese. Tuesday we are having um, sweet potato and black bean tacos. We're having a white wine chili flake pasta on Wednesday. On Thursday, we are having taco salad. On Friday, we are having red curry bowls. What I ended up doing is I made my list. It's somewhere now, I think I threw it away already. So I make my list of all the ingredients that I need for the week. And then I do a walkthrough of the pantry and the fridge and then cross off anything I already have so I don't buy double. And this is what I had to pick up. So this is a week's worth of groceries and a bunch of snacks just because we didn't have anything to like just grab around the house. I have some romaine, some corn, some heirloom tomatoes, which I'm super excited. I love tomatoes. It's something as an adult that I've started to like a lot more. I never liked them as a kid. And now as an adult, I love tomatoes. What is a food, name it down below, that you hated as a kid, but now love as an adult? Particularly vegetables, because I hated Brussels sprouts too, and now I love them. I got some broccoli that was already cut and cleaned. That is just for picking and eating. Same with the sugar snap peas. I just need some snacks for work. I got some rainbow slaw. This is one of my favorite things. I throw it on sandwiches. I throw it in salads. I throw it in everything. I got some basil because my basil is looking a little rough outside and I need a lot of basil. I got my proteins. I already said about romaine hearts. I got my dairy products. I have stopped buying shredded cheese. I shred it all myself. It's so much better. I would recommend you start shredding your own blocks of cheese. It really does taste different, I promise you. So I need these for um, some meals and then I'll slice and dice the rest up and we'll have it for snacks. Some tortillas, <laughs> more tomatoes. My recipes this week have a lot of tomatoes. Some homemade fresh bread, some milk cucumbers, salsa, black beans, and then I have stopped using the little plastic bags in the grocery store because you use enough plastic and then I use my bagus. They're amazing. They don't sell these prints anymore and they're so fun. But I just throw everything in my cart and shop and check out that way. So I have some jalapenos, some shallots, a little piece of ginger, some limes and lemons, avocado, one sweet potato for my black bean and sweet potato tacos. Um, hummus and then I ran to Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's is typically where we'll get like more of our snacky foods and Wegmans for like my ingredients and protein and stuff. They had these maple leaf tortilla chips so I had to get them and then just some popcorn and some corn and rice puffs, some spiced cider, some pita crackers, croutons because my one meal you're supposed to make fresh croutons and I'm not making fresh croutons <laughs> because I don't have that much time. 
So these looked really good and rustic and pretty homemade. So I grabbed those. Then my friend Rebecca grabbed this yesterday and I decided I needed it. It's a cinnamon bun spread. I might save it for when we have company. I also got some pumpkin butter. Trader Joe's taco seasoning mix is my favorite, but it's very spicy if you don't love spice. I got some salsa, um, some dipping sauce, walnut biscotti, pumpkin biscotti, some pumpkin bread mix just so I have on hand. Probably save that for company. I got Steven some pumpkin spice cookies because he loves them. And then I also got him the mini cheese and mini peanut butter sandwich crackers. I got myself tomato soup because I love tomato soup. Some turkey and cheese for sandwiches for lunch. Some pot stickers, grapes, and then some pumpkin ravioli also for Steven because he loves pumpkin. And then lastly, salt and pepper because I have some new grinders coming and I need peppercorns and some um, salt. And then I ran to my favorite coffee breakfast place and I needed coffee beans for my coffee maker. So that's what we're doing. Those are my meals for the week. They all came from What's, Ga What's Gabby Cooking, Eat What You Want. I love her recipes because they're simple, they're really accessible. And yeah, so that's kind of our grocery haul. Now I'm going to put everything away. A lot of you ask, I have a bunch of chip clips here. A lot of you ask how this pantry works. I'm telling you, it is so quick to put things away now, so much faster. I really, really love this system because everything has a place and there's just two of us and it's holding up beautifully. I've touched up the paint maybe once or twice and it wasn't because the baskets were like wearing just from pulling. There was actually like a metal tab under the one that got bent out and that was the reason the paint scratched. But you can see it's not touched up and like it's holding up so well. And I mean, we're almost, we're pressing a year into this pantry. It's probably been nine to 10 months. So we love it. I also love just having a place for my apron. I have a bunch of antique rolling pins. And then these baskets are, were like a game changer in the pantry. They've been so nice um, to have. All right, I'm gonna get all of our groceries put away. We're going to do some decor walkthroughs and share ideas, lots of fun things happening. This old man is here. Hey, what's up? Wasabi, hi. Hi, you wanna say hello? Oh, he's an old man, old beast. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, who's there? Who's there? See, he's still spry for 14 years old. So you had a burst of energy. You wanna get up here? You wanna get up here? Get up here. Get up here. He'll sometimes lay on this bench. Oh, he's a good boy. All right, we're gonna get the groceries put away. Do you want a snack? Do you want a cookie? I give you a cookie. He's gonna have a cookie, I'm gonna get stuff put away, and then we'll catch up. See you later. I am sweaty, I just finished working out. We're gonna do a fall decor tour soon. I need something to eat, I've had coffee today, but no real food. One of my go-to snacks, a piece of good pumpernickel bread, some hummus, some chili flake, and a little bit of really good salt. Go for it, you will love it. This will hold me over until lunch now. And I'm gonna have it with a very unhealthy Coke Zero. But you know, it's all about that one. So we'll do the fall decor walkthrough and we're gonna start at the front door. So the one thing I always try to think about when I'm designing for the fall or winter front door, I try to make the pathway really clear um, and kind of guide people through it. So I have this beautiful set of grasses that line this curve coming up to the front door. They're beautiful, they've bloomed so nicely. And then kind of building out the mums and the hay bell on this side. So I have like a very beautiful pathway for guests to walk through, which makes it feel more welcoming. The thing that I really wanted to go for was texture. So there's a lot of texture in my wreath, in the corn stalks, in the hay. I use two doormats that are super textured and woven, one that is larger. I am going to link during this walkthrough everything that I can, so just check the description box. Then my pumpkins are super textured. Then I think about having things in trios. So I have three mums and I have three lanterns. All are at different heights and they vary in size as well. So work in heights. The hay bell acts as 
a way to lift things up. Then I have this step here, but keeping things varying in height. And then I kept all my pumpkins within the same color. So like this really light orange and then the dark, dark green, and then just the few pops of white. It looks really beautiful. And then some additional height with the corn stalk, but really happy with how this turned out. This wreath has some beautiful purple and gold um, artificial florals. So I brought the purple in with my mums as well. All three of them are the same color. But that's how I designed the front. And then when we get into the house, I kept a really neutral palette this year and that was purposeful. I think fall decor can get very campy and like bright and I didn't want to go that route. So my entryway table, I only changed out two things. I added this old pumpkin from Home Goods. It's kind of like a grayish beige, but I love the texture and like the depth that it gives. And then I picked this up from the Studio McGee fall line. It's super wispy. Now here's the thing with artificial florals. You can make them look nice, but you have to take the time to separate them all and shape them. As we go through, I'll show you some of my other florals that I did that with. So for example, these leaf florals, if left alone, look really cheap, really fake. But if you go in, I literally spent probably 30 minutes separating every leaf, every branch, and it makes it look so different. So that floral is from Michael's. Everyone asks about this vase that's always on my table. This is a white vase from Pottery Barn. It doesn't come black. I bought matte black spray paint and just risked it and painted it. <laughs> I was nervous about it, but it was the best decision I could have made because it just helps tie in the, the light fixtures, the mirror, the black accents of the chairs. So really happy that I did it. But really neutral leaves. I hunted everywhere for something this simple and neutral and I found it at Michael's. I did not change out any of my art or decor. All of these prints, um, that's from Studio McGee. Those are from a company called North and Finch. I love them. I, uh, those baskets have been there forever. The only thing I added over here on our little bar cabinet is this paper mache pumpkin. I have been using paper mache pumpkins and paper mache trees for years. I get them at Target, I've got them at Michaels. They're like three to five dollars. I love them because they have like a very neutral tone to them. Now you're typically buying them to decorate them, to paint them, to let kids decorate them, but I buy them for actual decor. It's a way to get a substantial piece for a very reasonable cost. So you're gonna see these show up other places in my house. Over here then for Halloween, I added these bats flying and I absolutely love them. I bought mine from Amazon. They were really reasonable. They come with a sticky foam. I didn't use that. I used painter's tape on the back of my bats. Here, you can see a little piece right there. I used painter's tape because I didn't wanna risk damaging my walls and my paint. You guys know I just painted my dining room and I didn't want to mess it up. This is floral white. It's the same as the trim, just in a different sheen. All right, so that's kind of the entry when you come in to the dining room. Then we go into my pantry area. Let me go ahead and turn this on. So this is my floating shelves on the other side of my pantry. I kind of made them connect in the space. I just added two little woven pumpkins nothing fancy and just kept it going. This is artificial Spanish moss. I love having a hanging plant on floating shelves because it breaks up the linear fill of them. And I used a lot of terracotta. What's great is my decor lends itself really well to fall. Then in my pantry, I did do some decorating. So I added on top of that cake stand, two of those paper mache pumpkins. And then in the inset, I added some florals from Michael's as well. And it just adds a really nice little fall touch to the pantry. Um, my towels and my apron really help bring in the color, but honestly, these are the ones that I keep here all year round. So yeah, little fall touches here in the pantry. I cannot wait to decorate that for Christmas. I have a vision for how I'm going to do that. 
in my kitchen, I really don't over decorate for fall. And when I do choose to decorate, I try to keep it super functional. So you'll see my island centerpiece is just the Studio McGee vase. The twigs are already in it. I just separated them. But two really pretty napkins in the same color scheme. And then the Hearth and Hand Magnolia line at Target did these beautiful rust and dark teal plates. It's functional. It makes sense that that's in a kitchen. That's what I love to use for decor. So that's my island centerpiece. And it's actually one of my favorites I've had. During Christmas and past years, I've done like a hot cocoa station on a sled. Still really functional. I think when you start decorating with things that aren't functional, it doesn't make sense in this space and it just looks out of place. The only other things I added were two little artificial pumpkins above my stove and a little artificial pumpkin over here in this little vignette area. I just didn't want it to be too much. For Christmas, I'll do a little bit more with garland, but also keeping it really simple and really functional. In this space, I really changed up nothing except adding a little pumpkin that I got at Home Goods over on that table. Once again, really neutral tone pumpkin. I just love the texture of it. I knew I wanted to add some things to my coffee bar station. So the first thing I did is I switched out the mugs that typically are here because I found these pretty ones with this camel burnt orange glazing. So I added those. I did add this one little fall floral. And then in my cabinets, I just did two of the home goods woven pumpkins for texture. And then another one of those matching florals. It's enough to say fall without screaming it. And then I did add this little canister here just because that brings in the color that I've been going for. But yeah, just really small touches but collectively it makes a really nice impact in the space. Then in my living room is where I went a little bit um, heavier on decorations. It's also the space that it makes sense. I kept all my pillows the same. I just switched out a couple in that corner and they're all in like this very neutral, warm color palette. I brought in candles that match them in my lanterns. They're usually white. And then on my coffee table, kept it really simple. Once again, cheap artificial filler vase flowers from Michaels separated every branch to make them look a lot nicer. These are two large Studio McGee vases. The price of these for what they are is outstanding. It's probably one of the best, like, for your money. Like this huge one, they are heavy. And this was $25. Like you would just not be able to find that anywhere else. Beautiful vessels. I'm going to be incorporating these into Christmas. And then this chain link is also from Studio McGee. I just laid it in there because I love how well it matches the tone. But I like keeping my coffee table really simple. So that's all I did there. I will link the vlog where I made this garland out of chicken wire and pompous grass that I picked on our property last year. I sprayed it with hairspray. It has stayed so nice. I'm going to try to preserve this and reuse it. I just don't know how it will go. The only thing I added as we get closer to Halloween is I bought these really nice artificial like black thistles and I added them in for more depth and also like a spookier fill. I'll take those out probably in November. I did pick up this really cute spider bowl that I tucked back here. And then I took the same bats and I love that they have a little shine. I usually go with matte everything, but I purposely got these. They're also like a PVC plastic, so I can use them every year. And I have them kind of flying out of the fireplace, into the garland, out across the mirror, and then even like put them around this corner. Super happy with how that turned out and how it looks. Then over here, I just did some woven pumpkins all in a really neutral color story, kept it really simple. And then these two urns I bought actually for Christmas because antique brass is gonna be a huge part of my decor from a company called Hab um, Holistic Habitat. I love them. I've talked about them before. They're going to be for Christmas flower arrangements, but I loved the brass for fall and it went with the rest of the theme. I didn't do anything over here. The only thing I added in this little cabinet over here was one dark green artificial pumpkin that I had 
but that's really all that I did. But oddly enough, the little touches really add to make like it feel very cohesive. In my mud room and powder room, I didn't really do much either. I picked up this pumpkin. Um, I picked up this pumpkin a really long time ago. It's from Joann's, they're faux leather. I bought a bunch of them and I loved it. In my powder room, all I did was that little shelf. Those felt pumpkins are from the Target dollar spot. In my Peloton room, I did do a little fall touch with some of the Joann pumpkins as well. As far as upstairs, I very rarely seasonally decorate. There have been a few vlogmases where I have chosen to decorate the space. This wreath has been here. I didn't switch it out for one that's fall. I'm just gonna leave it go because the ribbon matches the rest of the color. The only thing I added up here for fall were two of, let me turn on the hallway light. I added two of those Joanne faux leather pumpkins on this table. But other than that, I didn't add anything. Best decision I have made and one of my proudest things that I've done was to paint this hallway and entryway. And that wallpaper at the end is so great. Yeah, so that is how I decorated for fall this year. Like I said, little touches over multiple spaces really added for a great impact. I love how neutral we kept it. And yeah, I'm really, really excited. It's probably my favorite fall decor. And it's going to be fun to see how I transition that mantle from Halloween to November to Christmas. I have some visions of how we're going to repurpose and reuse that pompous grass. So the other thing we're going to be repurposing are a lot of the vessels because they're going to go with my color theme for Christmas this year. If I look a mess, if you are not following me on Instagram, you should because I shared a preview of my decor theme for Christmas. I'll add a little picture in here so you can see it, but please hop over to Instagram and follow me. I'm gonna do a lot of specific fall and Christmas decorating recipes over on Instagram. So make sure you're following me over on that platform. It's worth it. We also do some lives. I wanna do them. I love them. We just did one the other night and it filled my heart. It was so great to connect. It's also just easier to respond to people over on Instagram than on YouTube. So that is how I decorated for fall this year and transitioned it for Halloween and how I'm gonna transition it to um, November and Thanksgiving, but most likely I'll be decorating for Christmas in November to get it for all of you. Everything that I can link, I will link down below for you so that you can buy some of these things if you want them. All right, I gotta get cleaned up because I'm a mess and then, yeah, we'll catch up. Alrighty friends, so I'm doing a little bit of prep for dinner this week. So I'll show you really quick what I did. So tomorrow night we're having this steak caprese salad. So what I'm doing right now, it's like 2.30. I went ahead and made the marinade and the dressing. So I'm marinating the steak now for about two hours. And then when I'm prepping dinner, which tonight is easy, I'm using a rotisserie chicken and just making a quick side. I'm gonna go ahead and cook off that steak and put it in the fridge and then just heat it up when it's time for dinner tomorrow. Cut up my tomatoes cut up my onion, make my basil vinaigrette, tear up my mozzarella, and then dinner will be done really quickly. When I'm prepping for the week, I try to think about what I can do the night before, the day before, to make life just a little bit easier. So that is one of my little tips that I do. Then, while doing that, Non-stop, I've been listening to Casey Musgraves' Starcrossed album. Favorite song so far? Starcrossed, Cherry Blossom, Simple Times, Justified Angel, Breadwinner, Camera Roll, Easier Said, Hookup Scene. Mm, I can do her without Keep Looking Up. I love What Doesn't Kill Me, and There's a Light. So basically, I love every song on the album. It's really, really good. I definitely want to share a couple books that I've been loving, but um, yeah. It's a nice, wonderful Sunday thus far. All right, friends, I am here 
finishing editing this vlog because I'd like to get it up a little bit earlier this evening so I can just rest and relax. But I thought I'd share some books that I have read and the one that I'm currently reading that I really love. So right now I am reading Apple's Never Fall. It is so good. It's shocking. It's, it's just such a good read. If you like suspense, um, psychological, it's gripping. <laughs> like, you must keep turning the page. And in that same vein, a book that I really, really loved was Not a Happy Family. Two parents end up murdered. All the kids have a stake in them dying and would come out on the other end. They were very wealthy. Kept me guessing, really, really loved it. Also, the same author of The Couple Next Door, which I have recommended. Two poetry books that I have absolutely loved, and I've not always been big into poetry, but have loved these two. All Along You Were Blooming and How Far You Have Come is by Morgan Harper Nichols. I follow her on Instagram and I love her. These books are fantastic. I also have the companion journal, but I haven't used it. But just beautiful illustrations, beautiful poetry. And then just a fun read that I've really enjoyed was Make It Nice by Dorinda Medley. I loved The Real House, and I say loved, I loved The Real Housewives of New York until Dorinda and Bethany left. I haven't watched the season. I've watched an episode here and there, but can't get into it. But her little autobiography, so good, um, gives some new, really great insight into her as a human, and I've really enjoyed it. It was like a very light, easy read. So those are books that I've been reading, have read, and what I'm currently reading. All recommend. I've enjoyed all of them. I am going to wrap up this vlog. I hope that you liked it. But before I go, I have to make an announcement. I am doing not only Vlogmas this year, but I'm also doing Vlogtober. But my upload schedule for Vlogtober is going to be a little bit different. I will have three videos a week. The Friday video will be Monday through Friday. And then there will be a Saturday video and a Sunday video. That's how we're going to do Vlogtober this year. So three videos will encapsulate a week. I can't do the same upload schedule that I do for Vlogmas, and I don't want to wear myself down before going to Vlogmas, but that is the plan. You can expect it to start. Um, I'm really excited. So that's the vision for the next coming months. We're going to have October, Vlogtober, then in November, we'll do a lot of Christmas decorating. And then in December, we'll be Vlogmas. So much happening. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this. This was a nice way to get back into things. And I'll leave it like I end all of them. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and be kind. Kindness is free. Give it to everyone until next time, which will be soon. Bye-bye.